Welcome back artists, I'm White Paints, and today I'm going to be taking a trip back down to that ominous wasteland of never-ending calamity. That's right, I'm talking about Kingdom Death, baby. This time, I painted up the Crimson Crocodile. So thankfully, there isn't any not-safe-for-work bits on this one. That way I can focus on bringing this pale panic producer to life and introducing my survivors to death. But before we get going, I'd like to ask you all to like, comment, and subscribe to help support the channel. It's free, takes two seconds, and lets me know that there's one more person out there that's enjoying the content I'm putting out. And for that, I can't thank you enough. But I guess I could begin by getting my brushes. Let's get started. The first choice I made here was to paint the crocodile in the sub-assembly. This is because after a dry fit, these parts showed me I was going to have some tight spaces to paint in. So painting while only partially assembled would be ideal. As for overall theme, I really like the look of the croc from the showdown page and the item drops. So I'll be using them as a heavy reference. All of these parts were primed with Krylon flat black. The first tip here is going to be to paint the red undertone. And there's no more fitting color to start off with than crimson red. This undertone will serve as the shadow hue and give a nice unnervingness to the final look. The hope here is that it filtered through the next few layers, it'll look like a deep old bruising and give me the foundation to add any blood effects if I wanted to. You may notice that this is drying to nearly black and may wonder, what's the point of doing this step? Well, it's because painting with acrylic paint allows us to use the paint's transparency to our advantage through layering. Using thin coats of paint allows the layers underneath to alter the appearance of the one above. So not only will this step give the model an interesting red tinted shadow color, but it will influence the look of the next few transparent layers as I paint the midtone. For that, I will be jumping to Ash Gray, as it's a nice neutral gray to pale out the croc skin. A heavy dry brush will make quick work of it. You just must be mindful to keep your brush strokes perpendicular to the details of the model. That way you can preserve the deepest shadows. Now, sometimes when dry brushing a light color over a dark one, you'll have some coverage issues. This is to be expected with this kind of painting, especially when trying to add paint to flatter surfaces. It's important to resist the urge to overload your brush to get more paint on the model. Instead, give the part or area a few minutes to dry. Either paint a different part or just put it down to stretch your legs for five minutes. Then come back and do a second dry brush pass. You should notice some nice and buttery smooth coverage. Also, I figure I should mention this little spot here. Well, the story is, I goofed. During the build, I misread the instructions and glued the finger that was supposed to be here somewhere else. And the finger I had left wouldn't fit at all. So I filled it with some putty before starting out. But I didn't wait long enough for the putty to dry and dry brush some of it out. Thankfully, it ended up not being that noticeable. But if I was watching, I'd be like, hey, what's going on there? You just messed up. Next up is Starship Exterior. This is the brightest skin highlight, so it's important to have a light hand. The goal is to have a vibrant and dynamic lighting and not to blow it out. Since I typically have a directly above light source, this will be focused on the top half and any hard edges. When painting in a sub-assembly, it makes it easier on you to achieve this by holding your parts in the orientation they'll be displayed in. This means for the head, while the top got a deep dusting, the bottom jaw only received a highlight around the lip. Looking at the showdown page in the manual, the croc skin is a taupe, almost cream color, so I grabbed a Minoth white base for an accent dry brush. In my head, I imagined these areas where it had grown a dry, callous skin and had started to yellow. I'm using a very little paint here, so it may be hard to notice the hue shift at first, but I wanted to make it as subtle as I can make it. Here I felt it prudent to hold the legs in place while I slowly hued them up to match the torso.
With the skin toads finished, I want to take a second to thank my subscribers over on Patreon. Your continued support makes me hopeful of what this channel and this community can be in the future. For that, you have my gratitude. If you would like to join the painting pantheon, there'd be a link in the description below. Otherwise, sit back, relax, and let's get back to this croc. Next to paint was those fingers and hands. Since they had what was essentially a zenithal highlight, maybe a bit of slap chop will come in handy here. So I grabbed some contrast medium and burned flesh to make a quick contrast paint. Just like with any contrast paint application, I quickly put an even coat over everything and watched for any pooling. The first coat was a bit light for my taste, so after it dried, I touched up a few spots until I was happy with it. Next up are its eyes, all 12 of them, starting again with crimson red. I wanted to call an audible on his eyes and make his main eyes fully red with blood oozing out, while the other ones more regular looking. And since I already used this red earlier, it was an easy choice to start from. Next, Vermilion was stippled into his main eyes as a highlight. And since I had the Vermilion out, I grabbed his tongue to start building up a texture I wanted. Whenever I have a large tongue like this with a deep center line, I like to make strokes going from that center line out. It'll start quite rough, but as you build up layers, this wonderful pattern will start to emerge. Once I can see it's established, I come in with a second pass to bolster some areas and give it a secondary highlight. Finally, Ember Orange came to punch up the final highlight. Orange is your friend when highlighting red. You can use lighter reds, but they tend to make whatever you're painting look pink rather than red. So a bit of orange or even yellow will go far in helping the final presentation maintain the hue we're going for. I ended up choosing not to thin this at all, but being very careful and cautious about how much paint was on my brush and how it was flowing for a tiny highlight stroke, followed by a light stipple to help mask my brush. I also took this opportunity to add a few dabs in the Croc's main eyes as well. For the rest of the mouth, I gave the roof and the floor a light pass of vermilion. This is a quick way to show off that awesome sculpted texture. These won't be so visible, so I didn't overthink this or kill too much time fussing over it. Next, I grab skeletal bone to get each tooth a once over. I kept this to a simple coat as I'll be adding a bit of a blood effect next with Blood of the Blood God. It gave everything a nice dose of blood, including the tongue, which in hindsight kind of stings. One, because I kind of like the bold highlights that it had, and two, since you can't really see him anymore, I could have just saved that time. Finally, I started adding Blood of the Blood God for final details, like these sacks. I was going to paint them orange or yellow as pus filled sacks, but I thought it would look too busy. So I decided they were just white leaky blood sacks and gave each one a quick pinprick of blood.
After a few more minutes, I was done. Look at this crimson guy. He is looking dangerous. Can't wait to fight this guy. What do you guys think? Do you like him? Do you, th do you think he came out okay? He's pale. He's red. He looks dangerous, but he's also kind of got a little bit of a derpy look. I like him. I like him. I do still have a few more Kingdom Death models I can paint for this channel, including some models from the base game, and uh, maybe we can get those in. Be sure to keep watching because you're going to get some more. Um, until then, I'm going to leave you as I always do. Thanks for watching. Stay creative and always enjoy the process.